Hi there, it's Rob Anderson. Today's video is going to be on what products you should be selling on your craft markets, what craft ideas or what items you should be manufacturing to sell. Okay, now the real answer to this is actually very simple. You can come here to YouTube, it's what I've been doing just to check it out and look to see what options there are. But sadly, what they don't do is they don't tell you a simple fact is what are profitable items? You wouldn't be trying to sell something for, well, for fun, I hope so, but not just for fun. Obviously, you're doing it so you can make some money and, and, and turn your crafting or hobbies into a profit, okay? Now, almost everybody doesn't tell you a simple fact of life is that when you go to these craft logs, in fact, let me go to one of these pages of mine. Um, this is on my website. What I do, by the way, on this website is that for fun, I'll go to markets. This one was the Into Fresh Farmers Market. And I'll just make a video. This is the video at the top here. Um, but these are the images that I made that I made from that day. So it's a farmer's market, etc. Okay, now, now here's the thing. As a member of the public, or if you like a new crafter that has no idea, you go along to these markets and you look at these products and you think to yourself, those are beautiful. I can make that. And without a second thought, you decide that you could be in business because they are there. Now, let me tell you, after 20 years of being on the craft markets in various guises, I'm 15 or something full time, you, you, you really, really should never just decide because you went to one or two craft markets and there was an auntie selling, let me just find the first product that's a craft here, not food, uh, because there's somebody selling XYZ. Here's a good example, and in fact, it makes a fair amount of money, where you do kiddies things. So you, you get the, from the crafting shops, you get the painter plate and coloring in things, and then you put up paints, and then the parents pay whatever it is, um, $2, uh, for, you know, and then your kid's busy for an hour at your, at your table. Those sand art pictures, all of those kind of things are done on that. Okay, there's nothing really at the bottom here, so that'll teach me to say it. Um... Look, this is a farmer's market, so it's very food orientated. Okay, so here's a jewelry one. Now, I happen to know the jewelry, if marketed right, can make you a lot of money. So, so this is not a good example. In fact, this lady was had actually put her stuff out very well. And no doubt is successful. She's got a website and everything. So that's not what the point of the story is. What I'm trying to tell you here is that research it properly. If you're looking for a craft to design and sell on, on wherever, from home, online, on the markets, on craft markets, even if you're just going to wholesale and supply stores, no problem. But do me a favor, please go and see what's actually selling. It's it's so vital. And and here's the thing. Let me tell you this, by the way, to interrupt my little story. I've already got a course. Let me actually show it to you. That sorry is, and I'm not punting the course to you here. If you want it, you want it, and if not, you don't. It's very simple in life. Um, somewhere in here in my course it's a $47 course $45 or something I'm not too sure somewhere in here I teach you how to do your research so I'm not even going to search for it but this is a long course um, I in fact have got another course let it open while we wait and that's called before you do your your business plan and that also will teach you how, in fact, it's under revision at the moment. Let's go down and look. Sorry, this is Africa, so things don't load very fast. Here we go. Undergoing revision before you do your business plan. Um, and it's been undergoing revision for a whole month. My apologies. But the idea of that is to tell you how to research stuff before you just decide it's going to work. Okay. So let me go back to this picture and talk to you while we do it. Or, or let's scroll through a new one here. What you've got to do is you've got to go to markets and not just one or two, go to 10 with a notebook and go to spend the day. Walk up and down and think to yourself, OK, oh, that's beautiful. I'd like to do that. I could do that. I could do that. OK, once you've done that, uh, incidentally, these are items you pay for in my other courses. So I'm telling you this tip for free. Say thanks, Rob. <laughs> OK, so go to the markets with a notepad. Go to the market that's going to be more likely the market that you're going to be selling on okay or the style 
of, of craft markets. So, so don't blend off to the cheapest uh, flea market and think, oh, cool, I can bring that craft here. There's a huge difference there too. What sells on one market doesn't necessarily sell on another. But there are styles of markets. Now, again, here in South Africa, I get that it's different to the rest of the world. But we have what we call flea markets, which is where there's a lot of manufactured goods imported cheaply from China and Taiwan and, and some beautiful crafts in from Bali and things. Um, and then often a lot of African curios, which all in all means they're there for budget conscious people. Um, you, you're getting cheap jeans, you're getting cheap um, clothing, you're getting cheap, cheap, cheap. You see the word cheap? Now, a crafter, you don't want to be in amongst the cheap stuff because there's um, mass-produced factories that are churning out the same as your stuff. You want to charge, uh, pick a number, $20 for an item, 200 Rand in South Africa, and these guys are charging literally um, $2. So you've got to take care. Now, this research is, is what you've got to do is you go to the markets and you walk around as if you're planning to sell it yourself. Look at it from that point of view. Look at it from an enjoyment point of view. Then walk around again and look at it from another point of view. Now think, who's displaying it the best? And make notes. So now in your first trip through, you thought, oh, these three stalls are lovely. In your second trip around, trip around, you've noticed that number one and number four and number five of those three st stalls, the first guy doesn't have a lot of stock. The second guy clear, clearly is very professional. It's been there for years and it's obvious. And the third guy just appears to be a very high quality, but perhaps not very good at selling. Whatever it is, take note of all of those kind of things. Then go and grab yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, a, a double vodka and Coke. It doesn't matter. Um, a glass of water if you have to and then sit somewhere where you can watch the people shopping believe me i know this from being a trader when i sit in my stall and i look at which stalls are selling well i'd walk through in the beginning and think these are fantastic or oh, i'd like one of those whatever it is and yet when the actual public comes in and buys they don't buy what i thought was nice they're buying something else and sometimes they're buying it in the hundreds and what you thought would be the best seller, that person sitting dozing off in their store. Um, so tells you that they've done something wrong and you need to analyze that as a potential manufacturer of a craft to sell. So sit back and think, what is he doing wrong? Is, is he scaring away the people by sitting folded armed in the door of his store? Um, is he scaring the kids? Who knows, you know? Um, but in truth, if the product's there and it's looking good and they're not doing any bad selling techniques in their stall, step back and try and analyze it. Are they, do they, is it displayed wrong? But ultimately, buyers will prove to you. So when there's a crowd, I mean, I'm not joking, you'd have to sit the whole day. And don't just do it this day. Go to another market that's very similar and, and spend the day there the next time. Take a book. Take a picnic blanket. Chill and relax. Don't let them obviously look look see that you're looking at their products in in a critical point of view so take a picnic bag take your dog and, and literally just chill um a deck chair and you you get all comfy and, and anybody wants to know what you're doing you say oh i'm enjoying the market it's lovely meantime you're sitting there little making little notes and saying wow that guy with the earrings seems to be really busy or the opposite the guy with the earrings is not very busy um, I can tell you now another thing too is that if you've got if you're analyzing this and a stall looks busy part of it could be because they're doing the tricks right and by the way that's some of the stuff I teach you in that course the other course but those getting the tricks right involve one very important thing and that is go big if you're, if those guys have got a lot of stock very often they will look busier than they are because people are attracted to huge piles of stock they want to scratch through stuff. They want to look at all the varieties. A person sitting with two little stands on their table of assorted jewelry and literally effectively 80 pieces is never going to do well. If you went with 8,000 pieces and had them stacked up to the ceiling where you had to get a stick to fetch the stuff down, you're going to be 10 times busier just because you had the volume. So bear that kind of stuff in mind. Okay, I'm already on to 10 minutes of your time. So let me run one last point by you. Um, I'm in fact busy doing a, another course uh, that's what prompted me to do this and look it up is what crafts to sell is I'm busy doing a course that is probably going to be worth $25 but I'm selling it for a dollar and it's not done yet so you'd have to come back 
to my website and look for it when it comes. I'm not even going to tell you here's a link. You're going to want to see it. But ultimately, that course is going to be as many as 30 videos. It's going to teach you how to research a profitable craft, mostly for online, but equally for offline. Um, and so that would be a huge, huge help for you. So call this a teaser video for that. But yeah, I can't even give you a link yet. So realize that in a couple of days time, there will be that course literally listed here as a tra launching right now for a dollar. Whether I keep it at a dollar or not, debatable, all good. But ultimately, don't just watch a few videos. Sorry, let's go back to the punchline. If you're looking for crafts to manufacture that you have to sell, please do not just go to YouTube, look at three videos, go through one flea market or craft market in a half an hour research, decide, cool, there's my business. Never do that. Spend a week doing proper research, extreme thorough research. And know that your earrings need to be more pink, more blue, more silver, more beads, more modern, more elegant. And that's if it's just earrings and just, you get where I'm going. As you will know through your research that this is exactly what people are looking for. And if you've done it right, your business will start off profitable from day one. The very first piece you produce, the next person to walk through your house will say, Oh, oh those are stunning. How much are they? I want one. And that's the reaction you want. Not, oh, these are so pretty. I hope you do well. And they walk away because then you failed. Right. So, wow. Did that almost in one long sentence. Thanks for your time. It's been 12 minutes of it. Thank you for that. Um, 12 minutes is a tip of the iceberg. If you're serious about wanting to find a craft that will sell either online, at home, on shows, on trade shows, on the markets, to your family and friends. Good luck with it all, though. Take care. Cheers.